Hello, my name is Christopher DeMeo, and I am the Director of Therapeutic Endoscopy at the Mount Sinai Hospital and the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. Today I will be discussing the results of our study entitled Transpapillary Drainage Has No Added Benefit on Treatment Outcomes in Patients Undergoing EUS-Guided Transmural Drainage of Pancreatic Pseudocysts, a large multi-center study. This study was a collaborative effort among 15 academic tertiary referral centers in the United States. The study was led by our team here at Mount Sinai. On behalf of all of the co-authors, we would like to thank the editorial board of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for accepting our manuscript and affording us the opportunity to discuss our work. EUS-guided transmural drainage has become the first-line therapy for management of patients with symptomatic pancreatic pseudocysts. This technique has proven to be safe and effective with shorter hospital stays and lower costs when compared to surgical drainage. It has been our experience that in the vast majority of patients, complete symptomatic and radiologic resolution of the pseudocyst is achieved by EUS-guided transmural drainage alone without the need for performing an ERCP and pancreatic stent placement. It was clear from our discussions with colleagues at other institutions that there were varied approaches in the endoscopic management of pancreatic pseudocysts and that no overall consensus on whether patients should undergo EOS guided drainage alone or whether this should be combined with a transpapillary pancreatic stent placement. Our review of the existing literature on the need for combined transmural and transpapillary drainage revealed conflicting results, with one large study reporting no significant difference in clinical success between the two groups, while another large study demonstrated that the combined approach was associated with higher rates of treatment success. Given this lingering question, we designed the current study. The primary aim of this study was to compare treatment outcomes in patients with pancreatic pseudocysts who underwent EUS-guided transmural drainage alone versus those who underwent combined drainage with both transmural drainage and transpapillary drainage. Our secondary objective was to identify factors associated with successful clinical outcomes in the endoscopic management of pancreatic pseudocysts. The design of this study is that of a large multi-center retrospective study examining the outcomes of patients treated at 15 large academic tertiary referral centers in the United States. A key part of our study were the strict definitions we used in terms of technical success, clinical success, and follow-up time parameters. Transmural drainage technical success was defined as the successful placement of a minimum of one transmural stent. Transpapillary technical success was defined as completion of the intended diagnostic and or therapeutic endoscopic retrograde pancre pancreatography. Combined drainage technical success constituted that both transmural and transpapillary technical success were achieved. Symptom resolution was defined as the complete absence of any symptoms at follow-up. Radiographic resolution was defined as the complete resolution of the pseudocyst on repeat imaging at follow-up. Treatment outcomes were evaluated at both short-term and long-term follow-up. Short-term follow-up was defined as an interval of a minimum of two weeks after transmural stent placement, but before the stent was removed. Long-term follow-up was defined as a period of at least two weeks after the transmural stent had been removed. In terms of results, a total of 375 patients underwent EUS-guided transmural drainage of a pancreatic fluid collection. Of this group, 174 were for a pseudocyst and were used in this analysis. The transmural drainage group consisted of 95 patients, while the combined therapy group consisted of 79 patients. Highlights of our results include the following. Technical success was significantly greater in the transmural drainage group at 97%, compared to that of the combined drainage group, 44%. There was no significant difference in adverse events between both groups, with adverse events being encountered in 15% of the transmural group and 14% in the combined group. There was no significant difference in long-term symptomatic resolution between the two groups, 
69% in the transmural group compared to 62% in the combined drainage group. Similarly, there was no significant difference in long-term radiologic resolution between the two groups. In a subgroup analysis of patients undergoing combined drainage who did have successful pancreatic duct stent placed across a leak or disruption, there was still no significant difference in treatment outcomes when compared to those who underwent transmural drainage alone. Multivariate logistic regression analysis revealed no statistically significant predictors of adverse events, short-term or long-term rate symptomatic resolution, or short-term radiologic resolution. An attempt at transpapillary drainage was the only clinical variable which was negatively associated with long-term radiologic resolution. It should be noted that although baseline characteristics were similar between the two cohorts, pancreatic duct leaks or disruptions on index imaging were more commonly seen in patients who underwent combined drainage versus those who underwent transmural drainage alone. However, this difference may be clinically insignificant as PD leaks and disruptions were not found to be a predictor of treatment outcomes in this study. Nevertheless, given the retrospective nature of the study, it remains unclear whether the association of combined drainage with worse treatment outcomes was due to failure of transpapillary drainage or whether the need for transpapillary drainage was a surrogate of more refractory disease. Ideally, future studies would be prospective, randomized, and involve a larger number of subjects, and in particular, control for the presence of a pancreatic duct leak or disruption. In conclusion, this study demonstrated that transpapillary drainage may have no added benefit on treatment outcomes in patients undergoing EUS-guided transmural drainage of pancreatic pseudocysts. We thank you for your interest in this study and invite you to read the manuscript in full for a more detailed analysis and discussion. Thank you.